SimVT is a new workflow tool in Oasis LS Dyna version 21 that makes it easy to perform simulation versus test correlations. This is an essential step in the automotive virtual testing frameworks, but SimVT is a versatile tool which can be used to compare any two data sources. In this video, I'm going to cover a quick start guide for how to use SimVT to compare ISO MME and CSV data without loading in an LS Dyna model. So I've opened up a fresh session of THIS. I don't have any LS Dyna models loaded in. So if I click on the workflows tool, I won't see any workflows available as this window is populated with workflows from the loaded in LS Dyna models. If I want to use SimVT without loading in any models, I can run it from the JavaScript tools. So I'll click on SimVT and it opens up on the right hand side with the correlation setup window. Next, I can import some ISO MME data I'm going to import some test data here. And I'm also going to import some CSV data. Note that the reference test has been set to T2 because that was the last imported data. So I'll need to change this to T1 as T1 is the test data. I can remind myself of this by hovering over and seeing the additional information. Note that data imported in this way is assumed to be in SI units, so that's meters, kilograms, seconds, radians. If that's not the case, then you'll need to correct the data before importing it, or you'll need to correct it afterwards in SimVT by using the corrective operations. I'll now select T2 as the simulation. I'm not going to use the protocol option in this demonstration as I've covered that in another video. I'm going to change the method to Cora plus 4.04. Note that the evaluation interval has changed there. SimVT has automatically matched a number of channels and if I hover over any of them I can see what the matching was. So T2, which is my simulation, has been matched to T1 and I can see that the unfiltered X head acceleration has been matched to the pre-filtered X head acceleration of test. So the last character there is 0 for sim and P for test. And this is quite a common case. So because of it, the channel matching rule for this is set by default so that 0 and P are treated interchangeably. The channel matching rules can be used to help you match other mismatches in your data sources. For example, it's common for the first character to be a D for dummies. So if you ignore test object, that will help you match those. You can ignore position and that will be useful if for some reason you want to correlate between left hand drive data and right hand drive data. And then I could ignore the filter class, but when I select this, it won't let me add any other rules because this rule is set by default. So I would need to click on it and delete it if I wanted to ignore the filter class in this way. In this scenario, it doesn't make any difference because I've only got zeros and p's, but if I had filtered channels, note that they would also be matched. If I want to see which channels did not find a match, I can click on all channels. And those that appear in gray are those that only exist in either the simulation T2 or the test data T1. And those that are white are selectable because they exist for both test and sim. Changing back to selectable channels will allow me to see just those selected channels. To start with, I'm going to add a regular expression search rule so that only those head accelerations are found. And then I can click all and correlate. So an issue seems to have occurred here. And if we have a look at the warning messages, and scroll down to the bottom. We can see that there is an issue regularizing the curves to 10 kilohertz. There's also a helpful message here suggesting that the problem could be that my data was assumed to be in seconds, but it was actually provided in milliseconds. So I can try setting mul x to 0.001 to correct this. So if I go to operations, turn off auto plot and select all the head channels, I can then correct the simulation curves to 0 0.001 and try plotting again. And this time we see that that worked. So that suggests that the issue was that the units were in milliseconds, not seconds. I can now add more channels to correlate by clicking on back and then turning off the filter here and selecting them all. And notice that many of the correlations have failed again. So I'll need to do the same correction to the other curves. So auto plots off, I can select them all. And then with holding down shift, I can select the rest here. 
and I can actually just click in any of the values that I want to propagate and press enter and then press plot to replot. The correlation has been completed. I can now minimize the operations and expand ratings and I can interrogate my results here. Some of these results are throwing in errors still, so I can actually click on them to highlight them. And I can see that the issue here is that my reference test data appears to be a flat line zero signal. So that suggests that there is an issue gathering the data. I can confirm that by blanking the simulation curve and then restoring it with the middle mouse button. If I want to just focus on the error curves to make sure, I can turn off all the plotting and then holding down shift and control combinations. I can select all of the error curves here and then press plot. And if I go to the first virtual page here and minimize the window, I can see that indeed all the reference curves are flatline signals until we get to these plots. So we can take a look at those And what we can do is click back and then filter just the B pillar curves and then correlate again. And we'll see only those shown here, which can make it easier to interrogate the results. And we can see the total score was evaluated for the X and Y acceleration, but there appears to be an issue with the Z acceleration. If we take a closer look at that curve by changing the view to one by one, and then selecting it here. We can see that this time the simulation curve is zero. So there was an issue with my simulation data gathered for that particular curve. This quick start guide demonstrates using SimVT to compare ISO MME and CSV data without loading in an LSDyna model. I cover a range of SimVT features which are summarized here. I showed how to load SimVT without the need to load an LSDyna model into THIS first. I showed you how to import ISO MME and CSV data into SimVT. Note that the unit data is assumed to be an SI unit. I showed you how to use channel matching rules to match ISO channel codes that differ between test and simulation, and how to display all the channels or just the selectable channels showed you how to perform corrective operations to convert multiple channels from milliseconds to seconds, how to plot corridor correlations for simulation versus test, how to select groups of channels using a combination of shift click and control click, how to highlight the corridor graph for individual channels, how to change the virtual page, how to change the graph layout, and finally, how to identify some common issues with imported data. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments and requests.